This is a bath bomb from Lush. It's called the Experimenter and that's a very suitable name because we're going to experiment to discover what makes bath bombs fizz. But first we're going to make a bath bomb. These are the ingredients we need. Baking soda, citric acid, Epsom salt, cornstarch, water and oil. I just used olive oil here and that was a mistake. I should have replaced most of this with essential oils, but I didn't have those. And we'll find out at the end why olive oil didn't work, but hey, that's life as an experimenter. I used equal amounts of citric acid, epsom salt and cornstarch. Here I have 100 grams of each, and then I have twice as much, so 200 grams of baking soda. The exact amount of water and oil is not as important as you'll soon see, and I actually used too much oil, but I'll link to a working recipe in the description. First, I mix together all the dry ingredients. I added the citric acid to the baking soda. Now, these two things together are enough to create the fizzing reaction once we add water. I'll show you that in a bit, but not with this batch. This is for the bath bombs, and we first need to add some more things. To make it more suitable for bathing, we add Epsom salts, but that's not required for the fizzing. And to hold it all together into the final bath bomb shape, we add the cornstarch. And again, that's not required for the fizzing reaction. Now it's still just a dry mixture and we can't shape it into a ball yet. We need to add moisture, but once the water molecules touch the citric acid and baking soda, the fizzing reaction will immediately start, so we have to be very careful. First I mix the wet ingredients together. Now I'll very slowly, drop by drop, add them to the mixture. It fizzes a bit wherever the drop hits, but if I stir or mix it quickly enough, it will stop again. I'm going to keep doing this until it has a structure of slightly wet sand, just enough to stick together. Because I can only add a tiny bit of liquid at a time to prevent it from fizzing, this will take a while. And uh, while I do this, and I'll speed it up for you, I also want to quickly mention a product called Groovy Lab in a Box, which produces kits with experiments that you can do at home. Their kits are a lot less messy than what I'm doing here, and they give you very clear instructions so you can do hands-on science and tech experiments. Groovy Lab in a Box kits are for kids age 8 and up, and you can buy them as a single box, in sets of 2 or 3, or as a subscription. There's a link in the description below with more information. Okay, let's check on the bath bomb mixture. When it gets to the stage where it just sticks together, I'll cram it into the shapes I want. I had enough here to make several different kinds of shapes, big and small. I then set these aside for a few days to dry, and once dry, they should work as bath bombs. I'll come back to them later, but first... CHEMISTRY! I said that the citric acid, baking soda and water alone were enough to cause the fizzing. Here's what happens. The baking soda is a base, and the acid is an acid. In water, they can move around and split into ions, which are molecules with either a positive or a negative charge. When they react, they create two ions, water molecules, and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas, and that's what causes the fizzing. When a dry bath bomb hits the water, this is the reaction that occurs. But we can also recreate it in bowls with just dry citric acid and baking soda. When they're dry, I can just add them both together in a third bowl and nothing happens yet. Now let's add water to all of the bowls. Nothing happens when I add water to the citric acid. Nothing happens when I add water to the baking soda. But when I add water to the mix of the citric acid and baking soda, it fizzes right away. You can get the same type of reaction with vinegar instead of citric acid. You might have done that at some point to create a vinegar and baking soda volcano in science class. And just to test whether the bath bomb will work, I added a bit of water to the leftover mixture in the bowl I used earlier, and yep, it started fizzing. So it's now a few days later and the bath bombs are ready. Here I put one in a sink and it works. But if you wait a bit, you can see something weird happening. That yellow color that's starting to appear in the left of the sink, that's olive oil. This bath bomb and the others I made were way too oily. Instead of using olive oil, I should have used essential oils, but I didn't have them, and I thought I'd use whatever oil I had. Lesson learned, these were not suitable to bathe in. But even though I added the wrong oil, the essential chemical components for the fizzing reaction are there. Baking soda, citric acid, and water. 
And this is exactly the same reaction that happens whether you make your own bath bomb or whether you buy one at Lush. They just look a lot prettier when you buy them in the store.